Namaste. <laughs> I'm celebrating. <clears throat> I have a fantastic announcement to make. After literally years of research into the original sources of the Buddha's teaching and its derivatives, I have rediscovered <laughs> something that I was shown briefly a long time ago. But now I have the entire source text to all of the original Qi Gong scriptures in English with the original Chinese sources uh, for the important quotes and stuff like that. So that means, finally, after all this time, we are able to trace out the, mm, the history of this lineage back to India. Dhammo, or Bodhidharma, as he's known in India, walked across the Himalayas to China in, I don't know, 16 something or other. And then he wound up at Shaolin and he founded uh, the schools of Qigong and several others. And he wrote two very important books that actually define Qigong, the iron shirt treatments. Uh, I mean, everything, including all the herbs, everything. So I've got all that text. And the next series after this one is going to be based on them, the authentic original Chico texts. <laughs> oh, there's some juicy stuff. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, but to get there, or to understand what we read when we finally get a hold of these things, <clears throat> we have to have the background. We have to have the analytical view, huh? like a, a coordinate system. Like if you want to fly a plane, you have to know your position. You have to know your latitude and longitude and altitude, altitudes. <laughs> and be able to calculate based on the destination what kind of course you should take and you know, all like this, what altitude and so on. So, <laughs> similarly, to navigate in the space of consciousness or spiritual space, there has to be some kind of coordinate system, some kind of framework, some kind of structure, even though we know all structures are illusory. <laughs> Uh, we still need a map, a model, whatever you want to call it, an ontology or whatever, a background with which to measure and evaluate things we experience. And an ordinary background isn't going to cut it because the ordinary background is limited by the uh, social taboos and stuff like this, but experience is not. Look at nature. Nature is metal, man. I mean, nature is heavy. Uh, nature, yes, can be beautiful, gorgeous, alluring, seductive, ecstatic, fantastic, and so on. But nature can also be brutal, heartless. Uh, everybody has to die, right? That's the price of admission. If you want to be, you have to be ready to embrace non-being. So what are we doing here? <laughs> We're trying to understand the different states of being. How to navigate them. So that at the time when we finally have to leave them and embrace non-being, we won't be confused. See, life is zero at the beginning and zero at the end. Dust unto dust, right? 
the Bible says. So what is that? Well, you have a zero on this side and you have a zero on this side. Huh? Two zeros make an infinity symbol because there's an exchange between them. See, there's a positive zero and there's a negative zero. Yin and yang, whatever you want to call it. So the oscillation, the tension, the flow between these two extremes creates what we call manifestation or becoming. And in our present form, that becoming has seven sub vortexes. <laughs> okay? We are each one big vortex, an aggregate of many different things. And at the top level, this aggregate is divided into seven sub vortices, and those are the chakras. Now I'm going to flash this diagram on the screen. On the left side, you see the yogini sitting there. And the seven chakras are highlighted on her body. And they're labeled sex, energy, motion, emotion, speech, mental ecstasy. These are the functions, not the proper names. We don't need to get into all that Sanskrit. And then across the top are the energy states. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm sure they have names in some scripture somewhere, but it's so obscure, I couldn't find it. But because we have the musical scale, sa di ga ma pa da ni sa, we can make a rough approximation because these are the natural vortices, the natural um, harmonics of the major vortex of the body, the being, the person, the individual. So what are these energy states? Well, basically they're, <clears throat> again, number one is basically zero. Zero with ignorance. And number seven is also basically zero, but zero with knowledge, zero with realization, and that's enlightenment. So you have one from zero to zero, <laughs> and in between you have two, three, four, five, six. See, this is the I Ching. All change is accomplished in six stages, and the seventh brings return. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven is the final tension, which when resolved leads to Nibbana, complete cessation. Now, after that cessation, things start up again, you know, because that's just what they do. <laughs> things start up again. And everything goes back into motion, relative motion again, and duality and so on. So the stages in between, two, three, four, five, six, are like the steps of the I Ching, the, the lines of the I Ching or the notes of the scale going up. Sariyama Padanisa. All right. So let's, let's look at the sex chakra specifically. In the first energy state, well, none, zero. And in the second energy state, animal sensation. What does that mean? It's like when you first wake up in the morning and you stretch. Oh, yeah, good morning. Yeah. Hello, world. You know, <laughs> Feels so good, right? That's the second energy level. You just got up from blank, from zero, and now you're getting that animal pleasure of, yeah, I got a body. Hey, look at this, you know? And the next energy state is genital orgasm. Genital orgasm is what animals have when they have sex. It's no wonder they're not so attached to it as, as humans. <laughs> because all they have is just a clunky genital orgasm, you know? This is like, like masturbation. It may or may not involve a partner. 
doesn't matter. It's the same low quality, low energy, huh? just barely get there, you know, kind of uh, orgasm. <laughs> but of course, any orgasm gives at least a tiny little bit of taste of the absolute, the unconditioned, enlightenment, bliss. Huh? Because for just maybe a, a number of seconds during the actual orgasm itself, or immediately afterwards, you're a little detached. You're not out there, you know, uh, working hard to create an ego and all of that. You are simply being. Uh, and that's tremendously beautiful. And then the next stage is called whole body orgasm. You know, I, there are no really good terms for these things. I'm having to like fudge the meaning of the words. A whole body orgasm is when you feel the orgasm, not just in the genitals, but everywhere. And what this really is, is the center of awareness is shifting from the meat body to the energy body. What happens during an orgasm is that your whole nervous system goes into overdrive, hyperdrive. <laughs> you go into hyperspace for a few minutes. Huh? So if your center of awareness is on the meat body, you will experience the flow of that intense energy in the genital area. But if it's on the energy body, the prana, my uh, pranamaya, it's the anamaya body is the meat body. Pranamaya body is the energy body. Huh? So if the orgasm is felt in the energy body, it will be felt all over. Well, what's happening is that you're now perceiving your body as a unit of energy. And that unit of energy happens to be turned up to 11. <laughs> so shred him up, man. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyways, the next stage is called energy orgasm. Now, what is an energy orgasm? It may or may not coincide with a genital orgasm. It is an energy orgasm in the energy body. Kosha, oh, that's the word. Not the anamaya kosha, not the meat body, but the pranamaya kosha, the energy body. When the energy body has an orgasm, wow, that's even more intense than a whole body orgasm. Uh, because it's felt not as kind of a a fire sparked by the meat body orgasm. But it doesn't even need the meat body orgasm. It's independent. See, now that means your realization and your uh, inhabiting your energy body is getting really strong. Okay, this is where Qigong practices take you. Okay, and then the sixth level orgasm is a uh, complete orgasm where not only the genital, not only the sex chakra reaches the peak of its energy, but all the chakras do at the same time. See, this is what we're trying to achieve with secret heaven. And the seventh level orgasm, well, it's indescribable. Because remember, at one end of, of the scale, zero, there's nothing with no with unawareness. At the opposite end, there's zero. There's nothing with full awareness. So <clears throat> there's nothing, and then there's nothing. You see. It's just like sleep. Sleep without awareness is simply sleep. Sleep with awareness is samadhi. See, sushupta, the dreamless sleep. 
So without awareness, it's just the same as the animal's experience. With awareness, it's something unique that only human beings can experience. And it's a form of enlightenment. So there you have it. There are the seven levels of orgasm. And when you reach the final one, <clears throat> all the chakras orgasm together, and it's so intense that it changes you forever. And that's enlightenment. So this is the conclusion of the Intro to Secret Heaven series. And the next series, we're going to start going into the original root texts of Qigong, uh, the books by Damo Bodhidharma, uh, written at Shaolin Monastery in, uh, I don't know, 300, 450 years ago, something like that. So that's going to be very interesting. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. I should grow my beard, you know, really long like those Chinese guys. Om Tatsa. Budu Saranai.